maybe for the people that pays uh, a good attention, I, I slightly changed the title for my presentation. So it's called Why Go Back to Horses Farming uh, for Post-Fossil Fuel Societies. And you'll, you'll find out why I made that change uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, but before I begin my presentation, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for this two-day seminar. So I find it very exciting to be part of this event and to listen to all the, the, the presentations that are coming in the, the two days. And uh, my name is Wijnand Boomstra, and I work as an associate professor in environmental sociology in Uppsala University in Sweden. And um, in what follows, I will present some uh, preliminary findings from uh, my study, why people use horses in farming, especially in the, in the context of the global north. Um, and um, I believe it's important to understand reasons for why people uh, still farm with horses, because as many presenters uh, point, pointed out already, but also will point out during the two days, uh, this type of farming has a great potential for making agriculture more sustainable, uh, especially uh, when we are going to a post-fossil fuel society. Um, to begin to understand the reasons and the motivations that enable horse-driven agriculture, uh, it makes sense to consider first the type of thinking that got horses replaced by engines. Uh, so following uh, the quote shown here, um, I will call this mode of thinking the modern mind. And this modern mind uh, only sees half the horse, as you can read in the quote. It sees the horse only as a tool, uh, so comparable to any other tool or any other machine. Uh, but as uh, Alan Tate in this quote argues, uh, there's more to the horse besides how much labor or power it supplies. And the argument I will uh, present uh, is that we can only understand why farmers nowadays use horses if we uh, consider the horse holistically. Uh, so, and with holistically, I mean in all its dimensions. Uh, so not only as a source of power, but also how horses connect farmers in a different way to nature, uh, how they connect them to other people, and also how working with horses affects feelings that farmers have about moral and existential aspects of their work and their life. So feelings, for example, about freedom, uh, dignity, and also responsibility. Um, but I'm running ahead of things. Um, first, we have to return to this modern mind. And to illustrate what a modern mind is, I want to show you two minutes of a, a movie uh, that was made just after the Second World War in the country where I was born, which is the Netherlands. And at that time, the Dutch government, uh, just as in many other countries, um, wished to modernize agriculture to ramp up food production. And to do so, state officials, scientists, and uh, also agribusiness found it important that farmers switched from horses uh, to using tractors. And, and for this purpose, uh, the Dutch government paid for a short movie about one farmer uh, buying a tractor. And in this film, the one farmer persuades his neighbors to join him in buying tractors. Um, but in, the country, in, in that village, one farmer resists this proposition and he continues to farm with horses. And now I want to just show you two minutes of this uh, longer movie to highlight how the tractor is presented as superior over the horse and how this movie is an example of the modern mind because the film focuses on one aspect only and that is the aspect of speed. So now I will start up the movie so you, you can get your, your popcorn out and your, uh, your drinks and, and uh, enjoy this uh, short movie. So here you see the other farmers that are looking at this new tractor to they're, they're curious to see what it does. So they're saying now he goes. Let's see. And please take also notice of the, the music. 
because now we go to the neighbor farm and the music will change. And here you have the farm who's resisting to buy a tractor. Willem Janssen werkte door alsof hij niets gehoord of gezien had. Maar de anderen hadden al lang begrepen dat het een wedstrijd werd. So the narrator is saying that uh, all the farmers understood by now that this was a, a contest between the, the, the tractor farmer and the horse farmer. Man, this man is the son of the farmer who shouts, why don't you admit it, father? Give up. You, you, you've lost. Um, so the full movie um, about this, uh, this, this transition to tractor farming displays a number of aspects that would change uh, with the introduction of machines driven by fossil fuels. And one of them that the movie shows very vividly, even in the music, uh, is the changing speed of farming, of course. But other aspects, that, uh, one other aspect that is also visible in the movie are the rising costs of farming. Uh, that is, if, if, you, if you watch the full movie. Uh, because at the start of the movie, the tractor farmer is convincing his neighbors to pull money in order to pay for the new and the costly tractor. Some other changes that are not part of this movie, uh, because they were largely unknown at the time it was made, uh, were, of course, uh, the environmental costs of using tractors instead of horses. And so these environmental costs include CO2 emissions, but also soil compaction. Um, but that became known later in the 1970s, of course. Uh, but until now, we still uh, largely unsuccessfully uh, try to reduce uh, or avoid those negative environmental impacts of modern agriculture, and which is also the reason that... Uh, uh, which K Katie um, um, showed nicely in the presentation, why we need a transition to another mode of agriculture that no longer relies on fossil fuels. Uh, and that, is, that need is becoming more and more pressing. Um, so it can be considered uh, ironic uh, that in the search for sustainable and regenerative style of agriculture, a group of farmers, environmentalists, but also researchers are now try are returning to horses. And to be more precise, uh, some of these people have never stopped using horses. Some are returning to horses, but there's also people that are now learning to farm with horses. So what is the motivation of this group of people to turn back to the horse or to learn new how to use horses? So in what follows, I will present five reasons why farmers nowadays work with horses. And I discovered these reasons um, from going through literature, watching movies, reading blogs. Uh, and I also have been talking to horse farmers myself. Um, and in this search, I've been not uh, been concerned very much by, by scientific protocol or method, because at this stage, I was primarily interested in, in the discovery of findings. Uh, rather than to try to justify these findings. And that is also the reason why for today in this talk, I will focus on what farmers have said uh, and not so much on the theories or the literature that I've used. Um, but we can now take a look uh, in more detail at these five reasons that I discovered, and then I'll draw some general conclusions. Um, so the first argument for using horses in farming was already, already briefly referred to, and that's the argument highlighted by these two quotes, uh, how horses contribute to sustainable agriculture. And as you can see here, uh, aspects that are important are the role of the horse in making agricultural, uh, agriculture regenerative. Uh, it, it can feed back the, the compost into the farm. Um, but also that horses, of course, have very low uh, CO2 emissions. 
Um, and another reason why they're more sustainable is that they do not compact the soil so much, uh, and thereby they, they're contributing to higher so soil fertility uh, due to its positive effect on biodiversity, water flows, availability of air in the soil, as you can see depicted here. The second argument um, points to economic reasons for preferring horses over tractors. And as this quote displays, uh, horses are relatively inexpensive to buy compared to a tractor. And as other people also highlighted, the horses run on feed that is often produced uh, relatively cheaply from within the farm. Um, and it's good to realize here that these economic benefits are of course also very contextual. So the difference in costs between a tractor and a horse can be small uh, if one chooses, for example, to work with older tractors instead of the most modern one. But nevertheless, uh, many farmers are emphasizing that uh, to start farming with horses is, is uh, less costly than to, to use tractors. And the economic argument uh, often spills over into another argument, which is about autonomy and freedom. Uh, for example, in the quotes that follow, um, in this one, uh, horses are called a democratic resource. And that is because horses can be obtained, maintained and reproduced very much through own efforts and resources. Uh, so it, 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 uh, it gives space for a more autonomous development of farming. Um, for some other farmers, working with horses is a way to resist the development that this movie highlighted uh, at the start of my presentation, which is the modernization of agriculture. Uh, as the quote here highlights, the modernization of agriculture is often presented as inevitable and irresistible. It cannot be escaped. Uh, you have to follow this, this path in order to be a farmer. But some uh, horse farmers don't buy this determinism and they point out they can make their own choices. And even if working with horses is considered uh, by modern minds as backward and inefficient. Um, and in a similar reasoning, uh, farmers also mention that horses are hitched to machines that can often, that often are simpler and therefore cheaper to obtain and also cheaper to keep running. Uh, so many farmers do this themselves, as you can read in this quote. Um, uh, so they don't have to pay mechanics to do it for them. Um, and what all these reasons show together is that the horse enables styles of farming that can be relatively cost effective because they're based on resources that are produced and reproduced on farm. Um, here we have a third reason. Um, as we already have seen, the introduction of fossil fuels and tractors allowed farmers to increase the speed of farming, and in so doing, uh, being able to cultivate and domesticate more land and animals. And some farmers, such as the one in this quote, uh, experience the scale and the speed that tractors enable as problematic. Uh, so argued here is that a certain scale of farming helps to appreciate land and resources and as such stimulates a, a prudent use of those. So the horses help farmers to keep scale low. And because of that, they connect farmers in a different way to their land and to their environment. Um, and that same line of thinking, or there's somebody with the microphone open, I think. Yeah. So, so the same line of thinking is also, uh, uh, you can also find in a quote from a book of, um, uh, Leslie, who, is, who will be sent, presenting this afternoon, um, which is at the, at the end of this slide. Um, we go to the fourth reason. So this is a reason that is widely held by many farmers, uh, and it maintains that the horses make the work they do more meaningful. So uh, Lynn Miller, um, actually who will present later this afternoon, he says that horses make the farm work more fruitful, gainful, creative, and satisfying. And in this quote here, you see a number of arguments coming together. So first, the quote highlights how the dictum of labor saving or time efficiency does not make any sense. 
because it simply does not apply to farming with horses. Uh, so indeed, horses make work more labor intensive, slower, and one could even argue less easy as well. Uh, but horse farmers don't want the work to be done quicker. Uh, so working effectively and safely with horses imposes a, a skill set that is qualitatively different from the skills that you need to operate machines. And, and next to this unique skill set, horse farmers also mention a specific or a special state of mind, uh, which can perhaps be described as a, as a be here now constancy uh, through which you take close notice of your immediate environment uh, because you need to watch what's going on in order to make sure that you don't um, create dangers. Uh, horses are, are, are uh, flight animals, so they can easily uh, take off when they, when they get scared. Um, and because you take a close notice of your environment as an unintended effect, it also helps to take your mind off from some of the more remote things and thought that you might have. And that can be a, an advantage as well. So I'm coming to the conclusion of my presentation. Uh, with these observations and these arguments uh, that farmers themselves provide, we now are able to see the whole horse, uh, which is more than just a source of power. So farmers use horses uh, to make farming environmentally sustainable, to lower the cost of farming, uh, to strengthen their autonomy, uh, able to resist negative effects of agrarian modernization, on environment, work, and communities, uh, to organize farming on a human scale, and to give meaning to farm work. And so what do these conclusions imply? Uh, so first, by taking a close look at all these reasons, we can begin to appreciate and understand how horses uh, are a central organizing principle for farming and farmer relations. And with this, I mean, first, uh, that horses, much more than pure technology, help organize a distinct style of farming. Um, and indeed, as the quote, the first quote highlights here, horses too have agency. Um, not as much as the farmer, of course, but they also contribute actively in the construction of a farm and how the farm is organized. Uh, and second, horses invite farmers to organize their relations with nature they depend on, but also the relations that farmers maintain with family and colleagues and communities. And finally, uh, also the way farmers relate to their own selves. So how they shape their selves, their identity, their responsibilities, and also what they desire. And for this reason, uh, I argue that horse farming and horse farmers can un be understood as a sub agriculture. So, so as you might know, a subculture refers uh, to a group of people that exhibit behavior that deviates from an embracing culture or society. Um, and if we apply the concept of a subculture to farming, we get, we get sub-agriculture. And a sub-agriculture then refers to a group of farmers or rural people uh, that exhibit behavior, which is working with horses, that deviates from the dominant pattern of ag agrarian and rural development. Um, now, to be clear, this sub-agriculture should not be considered as insignificant or marginal. Uh, to the contrary, uh, it builds on a long and proved experience, which if we are wise, and that is also uh, uh, revealed in this quote, we would do well to cherish because it holds out many potentials for the development of an alternative and resilient uh, development of farming. Um, I'll end my, um, my talk with a disclaimer. Um, in my search for reasons why farmers work with horses, I almost overlooked uh, the most obvious reason. Uh, farmers work with horses simply because they prefer to work and live that way. They like it. So that, that's perhaps a very open door, uh, but it's an important point to make uh, because often we expect people to rationalize choices. So we are expected to do things for reasons so that others can understand why we, why we do them. But many of the things that we do are not based on rational deliberation, 
Uh, they're instead based on uh, intuitions, emotions, uh, desires, or traditions. Um, and, and all these reasons are all too human, uh, but they're remarkably often not considered in the science and the legislation of farming. Uh, so to acknowledge these feelings, it's best to now leave the last word to a horse farmer who captures in words uh, the satisfaction and the admiration and also the wonderment that farmers can experience when they work with horses. Um, and I'll, I'll start the quote. The best thing is plowing with horses in autumn. That is, two sweaty horses, autumn air, the smell of the earth, that's, and they go there, whether it's the combination or the balance, it, it's all the same. And they're hard pulling, but there's nothing that is holding them back. They're completely balanced. And just, just use enough power to pull the plow forward in the tempo, I think is good. And that's incredible. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>